You're watching episode number 80 of the Roll for Crit podcast, or you could be listening to it. I'm Jonathan Estes. I'm Will Keeler. And uh, 80. Yeah. It's a big number. It is. <laughs> Are we going to have a special celebration for our 80th episode? This is it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us. That's pretty exciting. Uh, I can't wait for 81. It's going to be even better. But let's not think about the future right now. We're here in the present, and some of the present is going to the past and the future because we've already talked about this game, but Fantasy Flight has gone... Nutso releasing not so. <laughs> not so. It's a word I'm using. Uh, releasing a whole bunch of articles about Star Wars Rebellion in the past week. Uh, we did talk about it when it was announced, and it should be coming out not too far from now, but with Fantasy Flight and board game releases. In the galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Well, also the fact Fantasy Flight is also tied now with Asmo D. So who knows? You never know. We can't. You can't say anything for sure. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, basically, it'll give you some of the deets on what the new, what, how the game actually plays and what the rules are, and it sounds pretty cool. So, once again, they okay. split into two sides, Rebellion and the Empire. What? I no. know. <laughs> to be honest, uh, after playing so many of our Star Wars games, I'm kind of getting tired of <laughs> Rebellion and the Empire. I'm like, oh, what would you do? Well, isn't, well for, I, I, one thing, I made, uh, completely co-op all, all Jedis. Or you could do, like, I don't know, like, rival Jedis or Sith or Dark Jedis, different... There's a more than well, those things what in you the Star Wars do universe. Is maybe something more like a, a firefly style where you're just a bounty hunter. Or something. Like you're, yeah. you're neutral and you can take jobs from There's either side. Plenty. You could be moisture farmers on. But we're, we're getting we're getting off topic. <laughs> anyway. Oh my god! Yes. Next board game: moisture farmers. <laughs> get uh, get what's his name? Uh, Agricola guy, Uva Rosenberg, to do anyway. I, it's a mix of farming, board games, <laughs> Star Wars. I mean, it seems it's to be it's a just perfect match. Delicious. Throw some miniatures in there, maybe a zombie. So, what this game actually plays, again, you're each side, so it's very asymmetrical. Okay. Uh, the Empire has all these gigantic powerhouses, you get to Death Star, you got all your right. ships, and the rebellion, rebellion is very small, it's just more, uh, it's more politically minded. And that's what I think is really cool, so the heart of the game is almost like a Fury of Dracula kind of thing, where the rebels have a base, secret base, on one of the planets in the system, or systems in the galaxy, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and the Empire has to send out probe droids to find out where their base is. So in that way, it's like a deduction game. And once they find out which one is their base, they have to destroy it. And the Rebels' goal is to actually, not to destroy the Empire through fighting, but to create a rebellion among all the people. So there actually is like this political goal for them where they're trying to complete missions to raise this track, that, and once they get that track, they win the game. So you have two different goals, two different things, and there is combat, and there's space combat, and ground combat, and all this stuff. But what's, uh, yeah, it sounds really cool to me in that it actually is different in the sense that it's more of that kind of, well, it depends on which side you're on, but it could be more of a political kind of thing. Well, what I think is interesting is how you mentioned, like, you know, you're trying to find, you mentioned Fury of Dracula. Yeah. And I was thinking all the roles, like, Fury of Dracula, Letters to Whitechapel, mm. uh, even Battlestar. When I'm thinking about the person who's hiding, is usually the bad guy, or at least in mo how most people would view the murderer, the evil robot, uh, right, right, the Dracula. In this, the what we would consider, I'm pretty sure most people would consider the bad guys <laughs> are the searchers. There's a small subset of people who root for Darth Vader and when they watch Star Wars, but yeah, no, that is kind of cool, and it's actually it also reminded me of uh, that game Noir. In the sense that the way the way it works is the the empire gets more cards each turn that kind of help narrow down. So they and the rebels don't know what's in their hand. So the empire knows. Oh, it's not these three planets. And then little by little, they gain more information as they go to narrow it down. So yeah, it is. It's an interesting, cool dynamic with with good guys. Yeah. So Star Wars. No, uh, <laughs> and this takes place during. It is four, five, uh, six. Yeah, it, it's basically during all of four, five, six because you might get cards depending on which missions you draw. They could relate to any of the three original movies, which is kind of right. cool. And it does. And Coruscant I, is a planet in this game, which was introduced in the prequels. So there is some of that. Sort of start. And I, we've had this conversation, sort of being a dead horse. Um, I I feel we've seen enough of four, five, and six. Granted, I understand why The Force Awakens hasn't been touched much, mostly because, you know, the movie just came out, they had to try to keep a lot back, and they already are getting enough backlash as it is for forgetting Rey and almost everything. Right. Uh, so I understand that. But the prequels, look, the prequels are bad, but that doesn't mean the lore itself was bad. No, yeah. And I think we can adopt those things. I mean, come on, we gotta use... Uh, it'd be so cool to have some of those ships in X-Wing... 
No, I agree, and I feel like I feel like this is definitely the like if they after this 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 feels like they're like really going all out. Like we did Imperial Assault. This is like our other ultimate Star Wars game. After this, if they go back to that well again, I think it's too for me. It's too much. No. Not for the general oh, public. The only <laughs> exception for me would be if they were going back to the well. Would be like they go back to all like we hit all. Like both the past, the mm. present, and the future. Right. Like something that spans the entire every Star Wars. Movie. Which they might even be able to it's do possible. with expansions to this. Right. And of course, we're not even talking about uh, is like the TV shows like Rebels, which is going out, which they actually Clone are Wars. pulling for the ship, uh, the Ghost. Right. For actually, which I'm like, that's cool. So why don't you get the like? I just feel <laughs> right. I mean, little steps. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's. I mean, they did already say. I mean, that we're not asking you to remake the Jar Jar Binks game, which, <laughs> though Jonathan will contest, is Maybe probably I the best am. game ever. <laughs> Maybe I am a little bit. <laughs> yeah, or even not even just just to not do what we just said. The same, you know. Rebels versus Empire again. Even the more, you know, to focus it more, like maybe maybe you're just Han, Luke, and Leia in the Death Star. Or you're just this these well, droids or something. Just you know, not just do the same thing. Well, I think. Again. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I have not seen them in a while. Yeah. The first three star. Oh, not first three. Sorry. The episodes one, Phantom two, three. Phantom Menace. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> politically wise. Yeah. Was not nearly as black in, in terms of two sides. There wasn't the rebel and the empire. Like there had the council and every race. Well, had it's, its own. like everyone is kind of it's. Everyone was united under a, a, the galactic republic. Right, but in the truth is, they all had their own agendas. Sure, as always is. The and case. I feel that would be a, a very interesting take on it. Is sort of maybe take mm. that kind of because I agree the political thing is very interesting. That'd be cool. like a Jedi and, council game. Well, where you're that'd actually be gr- <laughs> no even that because dealing with the Jedi's because as we've we've talked about the idea if we were Jedi's how we'd be Sith in the prequels because the Jedi code was so much stricter. While meanwhile and everything else we'd be you know we'd be thumbs right. up <laughs> and like playing on maybe that kind of idea and yeah, stuff. I think yeah. um, I d- like I do think the prequels have the information. May not have come together well, but I think it's there. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you 100. percent That being said, uh, Rebellion does look pretty cool. Oh no, we're not disagreeing with. We're <laughs> yeah. saying like, this we is good. Just, yeah, but now this is our tipping point. Yeah, what else you got? But anyway, I'm sure you don't need us to tell you this will be out soon. It'll be selling, and you'll want it. <laughs> well, it'll it's, be gone. It's big, big and pricey too. It's not a small, cheap game. It's a, it's a major deal. So that's Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, moving into other gigantic properties, we got a new announcement for the next storyline in Dungeons and Dragons, the oh, fifth yeah. edition. This is great. Yes, which returns an old friend, not for me, but for some people who used to play Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Strahd the Vampire from mm-hmm. Castle Ravenloft. Yeah, uh, I know this is actually also one of the board games they have, the few board games right. actually Ravenloft, so... Uh, I mean, it's definitely cool that it's showing that they, they're they pulling from, at least from what I've read and seen, a very popular character. Dude, Which seems like a trend because they did the same thing, right, with uh, the Elemental Evil. The Temple of Elemental Evil is also an old element from older Right, stories. and I think that is a good thing because usually when we see something recycled, it's like, give us new things. But at the same time, what d is trying to do is open up to a much larger audience, which I think they, they're doing pretty well on. Mm. Um, and they're trying to then bring back all these people. Like, these are popular. Right. Let's see how you deal with them now, like, in a much more, like, d and is not just do- dice rolling with numbers. Like, you can do much more yeah. social things that matter, which I think is unrelated, sort of, considering it with new people coming in. It can be even more interesting um, bringing up the video game you actually got. I um, forget that I'm blanking on the name. It's really popular right now, where you can actually combat with dialogue and mercy. Like, well, what system is this on? It's like a computer. It's like <laughs> oh, you're talking about Undertale. Yeah. So like, what if you took a lot more, like taking from Undertale, a lot more talking and like huh. into this, considering a vampire, which I would actually think that works well on, because he's much more of a vampires aren't just beast of strength. They're known right. for you know being very able to hide in a crowd, social mind, mind control. control. Yeah. I mean, so I think this works perfectly for the new D and D set also, or what they're pushing you, for. You it. I think it might also be. Um, because uh, I know a lot of people after like fourth edition, you know, Pathfinder became very popular, and I think maybe they're trying to be like, "Hey, come on back! Remember the good times that you had? Yeah, <laughs> we're no. doing that again." So I think it's a perfect to bo- like you said for you said for the veterans and, and like I'm saying new people, yeah, um, and with new rules and stuff and adaptations. In particular, this also be great seeing how people handle it with the website, which we talked about last episode. 
with people up their own stories and stuff. Right. Um, also, on a random note, just really funny, I was thinking on a site, Imgur, Imgur, however you say it, uh, there's actually a huge trend right now, a and d trend, where people are making jokes of like a, a DM going, you're trying to do this, what do you do? And they have a picture of a guy like, I try to jump over the fence. Rolls a one, you see a guy just trip miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Actually, in relating back to what you're talking, one was, was uh, Lucas, and it's like, you, you have a great franchise, what do you do? I make a new movie, rolls a one, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> Memes are the best. No. But I like, but like seeing that, and it's really funny. Also, then people are like, I don't know the rules to D and D, and like seeing how <laughs> D and D slowly like it's becoming. I'm very curious to see in the years to come. Is it not going to be the? I mean, probably still likely will hold it, but will we start seeing it less and less of a trend of the in the basement mm. alone, forever virgin? I kind certainly of? think so. I mean, it happened with video games. Mm -hmm. It'll happen with this. I also want. Uh, I wanted to mention that I remember that. Dragon Plus app that D and D yeah. made. There's this basically there's an old magazine Dragon. Now I actually read through a couple issues. They're all free. You can download the app and read them. And it's kind of cool. It's um it, it's very um it's a little bit like you can tell. Oh, it's written by people who work for Dungeons and Dragons. Like a lot of it, it feels like okay, this is their ad selling me Sword Coast Legends or whatever is coming out. Uh, but some of it's really cool, and they have some funny like videos in there too, and interesting articles and stories. So if you're Interested in D&D, I definitely recommend downloading that app. because What I actually think would be really interesting for D&D to do. I mean, I'd like that they're reaching back. Lose the dragons. Actually, that's sort of what I'm about to say. <laughs> they do sort of a split line. It's still Dungeon Dragon, so all their mechanics and everything. But they literally jump out of the mystical medieval era and maybe do like a futuristic one. Well, I definitely would like to see them do that as a different... Franchise. Yeah, no, I mean it's yeah. still. I'm what I'm saying. It's under the ban their banner, like they're huh. making it. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'm ready for. If no, the thinking, world I, is no, ready I'm thinking. No, I'm thinking interesting. <laughs> yeah. In particular, I think of. Well, there are like, you know, modules and stories and stuff where they've added science fiction stuff right, into it. Right, but uh, the reason why I think that is, um, I was thinking recently how there are certain video games that have quickly come out with some RPG versions of their game, Dragon Age, for example, and then I think of some other games which haven't, which I'm like. Why haven't they? This game literally is an art. Like this would be perfect for an RPG. Yeah, Undertale. <laughs> uh, Fallout was the one big one. I know. I keep thinking of every time I'm playing Fallout Four, and like if D and D would Zathura. be like, just take that, and I'm just gonna ignore what you said, <laughs> and like you'd be like, okay, we'll we'll release a book for you. Under, I think that could be an interesting mm. pair up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd love to hear what people, what the people think. They have suggestions for that because yeah, no, anything more that they do would be pretty cool. They're definitely, they're doing a good job with this one. No, I won't. Thing. I won't. <laughs> I don't think they sh like. It's not like we were talking about Star Wars. Like you're, it's bad if you continue where you are. Right. It's just that I think that'd be an interesting idea. For yeah, them to yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I, I definitely think like as a spinoff or something. No, that's what I meant. I didn't mean sure too much. Like it'd be one or two books maybe, unless it got really popular. Yeah, or they could just do like you know how sometimes in comics they have. The one-shot issue where, what if Spider-Man was a dog? And then, of course, <laughs> that one weird issue gets super popular. I'm yeah. like, okay, guess what? Gwen and Stacy's now permanently in the universe. Right, they released a bunch of one-off things like that. would be cool. Um, so that's D&D. &D. We're going to take it way down now from the, from the hardcore nerds to, to the casual nerds. Uh, we're talking it's about... your favorite game. My favorite game that's ever been made. It's called Exploding Kittens. Uh, it is the most well-funded, successful thing on Kickstarter ever. I can ever. hear the disdain in your voice right now. <laughs> Eight million dollars plus. Well, it's been announced that uh, they are releasing, finally, a mobile version. The iOS version already came out, Android, later on. You can see a screenshot behind us. And only a buck ninety-nine. I don't I think the physical game was like 20 bucks or something, right? Something like that. Uh, I don't know how much it goes for now, but we do probably know depends if you, because I think they had special case, like with the meowing case. <laughs> right. Uh, for a limited time, if you download now, all the in-app stuff is free, mm -hmm. uh, including a new expansion that wasn't in the card game, which we got or I got. Right, and we we don't know if that will be something coming. Yeah, later we were discussing that. about that, uh, and I definitely can see this is definitely fits the audience that I think exploding hit kitten hits. I mean, it's a mobile device. It's sort of that very simple, light game. Well, I don't know the details. Is it? Does it? There online play? I mean, there must I don't be. Know. There has yeah, to it be. Yeah, has to be. Because there's this. I don't think this game has the. 
You don't, because otherwise you're just sitting there. It's like flipping a coin by yourself or something, right? Or you're just <laughs> passing it around. May, well, if you could pass it, that would be good. But there's no way a single player mode no. would be enticing in this kind of a game. I don't think. But uh, yeah, well, I mean, we played it. You not so much of a fan. No, of I mean, it's. A, I mean, uh, you know, it, it was okay. I was. I didn't hate it, but you know, I just. I just. It's just for all of the. Uh, a claim it has is weird to me. <laughs> I still think my favorite part about that is I don't know why, but we I backed it and I got both decks. And just seeing it seemed shocking that you were shocked. You uh, you I mean the people everyone in general in our group was shocked by the not safe works cards. Considering some of the stuff you were like, hey guys, look what I found online. <laughs> and then John got like, oh my god, it's a cat with diarrhea. <laughs> There's some gross stuff in there, man. There's some gross stuff. It's because they're cats. You don't do that to no, cats. Right, right. Kittens are the bad ones. Cats are good. Right, that's right, that's right. They explode, those kittens. Yeah, the kittens explode. The cats are good. <laughs> anyway. It's like your little baby you have back at your apartment. Anyway, that's out <laughs> there. Uh, he means a cat. I don't have a baby. <laughs> anyway, you can download this now. You can look for it in the iOS app store. If you have one of them iPhones, if you're an Android user like us, plebs, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. And then we can give you our first-hand impressions, maybe. Oh, yeah. Find out if we can actually play against each other. But uh, uh, next up... Uh, Cards Against Humanity. Once again, another sort of game that's just really popular just among a lot of people in general. It's not like a very, it's like not niche, I would say. It's like almost the classic. It's not, well. Uh, it's well, it's niche, but not in the sense yeah. like, <laughs> like, you know how certain things are niche because only like 10 people do it? It's your it's your fun party game yeah. for everybody to enjoy. Mom, dad, the kids. But uh, not fun for, fun for some apparently. No, not for not for people who work at the certain news station in Toledo, Ohio, who it was reported were fired. There aren't a lot of details on this. They were just fired supposedly for playing Cards Against Humanity. Were they playing it on? Not, not on the not on the air. Now that I could understand. <laughs> I just imagined like, all right, uh, just uh, we're playing this fun little game for the family. Yes. Oh, apparently I have grandma's ashes. <laughs> yeah. No, the, I believe it was in their off hours, but for you know, po probably for work related, like uh, vaguely could have been you know sexual harassment or just workplace appropriate things that aren't in today's PC society. You can't Where was this again? Ohio. So, but I don't so, know. Uh, it's a Bible weird, Belt. yeah, pretty much. It's a weird, funny story that, um, uh, if nothing else, now they can say Cards Against Humanity is the game that will get you fired from work. Which, uh, first of all, I mean, what better publicity could they possibly ask for than this story? I mean, that's like that's probably their dream come true. <laughs> uh, if you're if you're Max, whatever his name is, making uh, Cards no, Against Humanity. No, it's definitely. I mean, well, here's my question though. Do you think, considering what you know now, what I know now, what, what little we know. Do you think that they should have been fired? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, I, if or if not, what would what in your mind? What would in this situation make it to justify it to justify firing ver versus not? Well, I think what 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 matters is wh wh who the people that they were playing with. Was everyone involved in that group aware of what kind of game it was, and did they say like, hey? And were they within earshot of anyone who might have been offended by it? Because that, I think, is where you have to draw the line. Where if you are in a workplace, yeah, if you're like reading cards like that out loud within earshot of someone else, that's like an HR thing. People right, but does that really lead straight to firing without any reprimand? Well, that I mean, that's the uh, that's where I, I don't know. That could like I definitely on feel. I mean, it also depends on the people that could have been reprimanded many times. Right, yeah, I know. But it's seven people. That's I'm like, did they just happen to get... We use weathermen are a dime a dozen now. If you don't step up your game, they will get rid of you. Oh, <laughs> It's God. a tough market out there. <laughs> That's, yeah. No, uh, it's definitely very interesting. I would love to hear more about it. And like you said, it's de out of all the games, it's definitely a game I feel is just so, so weird why it's popular to some of the people I see it play it. And I definitely am curious to hear more. Like, are these people just who constantly were they in earshot of people? Or did someone ask them not to play and they kept playing, or they kept putting the certain cards in some people's face? <laughs> Let's get. They were just going around the whole studio, just like, hey, read this, read it. <laughs> I don't want to. Um, I think we should get them on the show. I think we should try to interview <laughs> the people who all said. We'll do that people. for our playback. For it was like seven humanity. people too. No, yeah, it was seven, that's, what, that's why I'm saying. It, like, if it was one God. or two, I assume it's just because they've been hit with the lottery. Right. Level. But I'm like, what's the chances that these seven seven people <laughs> <You're> from <have> Ohio? <laughs> all, that's an Ohio accent. All seven people. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no one from Ohio watches this show. It's fine. 
Uh, but if you do and you know these people, please get us in touch. Anyway, <laughs> that's that's our that's us covering our real news mm -hmm. portion, real world news. Uh, in non real world news, we do have some Kickstarter pickstarters. Oh, do we? Now? And you, sir, are up. I am first. So what well, are you bringing? Well, my game is Adapt. It's from uh, Gatekeeper Games. Uh, this game is pretty much you each start off with a fish, a guppy, and of course, if you don't know, guppies don't like each other. They like to fight. <laughs> and that's what you're doing in this one. It's a two to three player I didn't know by that. the base by itself. Two, two, three. Two, two, three. Interesting. By the base by itself. And pretty much what's happening is you're just gonna be staring at each other and you're gonna get experience points each turn to spend on cards. And these cards will have adaptations like a uh, great white's mouth or the, the fl uh, change your body with flying fish. Pretty much they give you different evolutionary traits to help you around. And you pretty much keep going until the deck runs out and who's pretty much the strongest fish. Okay. So it's a cool sort of adaptation game, and what I think is cool about it is, uh, first, the game itself is doesn't take, like you mentioned, it remind you of Evolution. Mm -hmm. And what I like about it is, unlike Evolution, this is literally like like I said, Great White's mouth. Like it's literally pulling from the ocean, like much more s straightforward. Yeah, so it's a bit more I think actually cool educational sense. So you can think like a pufferfish is poisonous skin or something like. So you're thinking more along the lines of kind of like what isn't there some cartoon or something where they show like evolutionary traits and like the one fish is uh, tries to eat the other one so that one like gains this trait and then that one gains this one to fight back. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, anyway, it's a thing. <laughs> Sounds and like I this. think that's sort of really cool. And uh, it the it actually comes. They have little expansion packs you can also buy. I think they're all five dollars, and each add different things. One adds all like um, octopi. octopi. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the uh, cephalopods, I think they're those ones. Amphibians mm. and reptiles. One's actually mythical creatures. So if you want to add dragon wings and stuff like that in there, well, that's cool. <laughs> one adds more players. So if you actually do want to have it's, more people, I wonder because two to three is such an odd number for more. You well, usually don't see that. I assume they made it for the base, right? Have the, that. Because uh, in you roll, there's dice in it, and they have matching dice for each fish color. It just seems like you never see three on a box. It's two players no, or actually, two to four. No, actually, I have one game that's strictly three players. Huh. Because it's <laughs> Legends of the Three Kingdoms, uh. so you have to have each. But that's not what we're talking anyway. about Anyway. They actually also have one of them is also mech expansion, so you can actually adapt, like, jetpacks and stuff onto your fish. What? Yeah, so I think this is really cool. It has a lot of fun combinations. Well, I think most, and most of it, granted the mythical mech, not as much, but have very educational purposes. Like, you can see why this this part helps out a creature. And I just think a fun dueling ad ad adapting game. And it's only, I think it was 30 minutes playtime, so it's short, considering. So I thought it was fun. a cool, fun idea, especially if you like biology and the creatures of the ocean. This is definitely something that would be up your alley. A good jump from our the game we talked about, Scuba, last week. Yeah. And kind of, in a weird way... Uh, related to the Kickstarter game that I'm going to talk about, uh, which comes from Hemisphere Games, and what was it called again? Uh, Karmica? <laughs> oh, right, Karmica. I totally blank. Anyway, Karmica. I, so thought, I thought you were joking. I'm like, is there some joke in here he's trying to make you say? Yeah, uh, Gesundheit. <laughs> That's why that was the joke that was missing. So uh, the, way, the reason I say it's similar is because in this one you start off as a dung beetle, by the way, I find that offensive that dung beetle is the lowest thing on the karma chart. You should. <laughs> dung beetles are very offended. Uh, but as you go through, it's actually sort of like a reincarnation thing where you have multiple lives. And rather than you're not gaining new parts or evolutionary traits, but you're actually moving up the karmic Traumatic. food chain right. or whatever, however you want to call it. And so eventually each turn you, you get a new life, a new creature, and so on and so forth. And the way the game works is, is pretty interesting. There's like kind of multiple tiers of what you need to do. So everyone has a hand of cards, and the cards have actions on them that you play, and they do stuff. But they also have points. So the cards that you keep in your hand give you more points, and you want right. points. And then it's also kind of this card drafting thing where you're setting cards aside for your next life, and in, your, in the next round, you, you, those are what you're going to have to play with. Okay. So you're constantly kind of thinking about the Saving future. Saving Yeah, exactly. What is, do I need to do this now? Kind of like games that we really like, like Imperial Settlers, where, you know, I love when uh, the one card has a bunch of different options to do with it. And, the, and it kind of has a feel, I thought, um, it's sort of like a love lettery kind of thing where the card actions are like you can mess with someone's hand or you can take someone. The other thing is when you play an action, someone else gets that card for their next life. So in other words, your karma can come back to bite you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting things you got to take into account. Uh, 
Two other things. First yeah. of all, I think we have to mention the artwork for this game is gorgeous. Oh yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, second, there is actually a print and play that you can get. Right. I think is really important, which is really cool. And I know this one's already funded, and I forgot to mention for mine, it's uh, mine was twenty nine dollars. This one's twenty five. So both were really close in price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just it definitely looks like the kind of game you would put down. I think Love Letter, partly because the artwork, I think it's just that sort of catch everyone's eye. Mm -hmm. And I, it definitely is a really interesting take. It it really f makes you think on the oh, karmatic experience of paying it forward to your next life, or yeah, it definitely hurting that, someone and will hurt you in the end. Or I like that it's not just thematic. They it really they that's really a part of the game's mechanics, which is yeah. which is neat. Uh, yeah, so the yeah, print and play is there. So you got no excuse if you want to try it out and see if you like it. Like us, right as well. Yeah, <laughs> we have no excuse except the. You know, ink. <laughs> um, yeah, so both those games, as you said, are around 25 30 bucks. So check them out. Mm -hmm. They're a good pairing, a good, a good wine and cheese pair this week for Kickstarter Pickstarters. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much, all, that was all our stuff we got to talk about this yeah. week. I don't know if you have any other, any board game Bruins in your head. We haven't made any progress on our 10 by 10 if you were well, wondering. Well, <laughs> to be fair, mm -hmm. we didn't meet up last week because no one could, and we're meeting up after recording this, so I don't think that's a fair thing. To that's be fair, for our game yeah. night. Uh, and we're still working on D&D &D and stuff. Um, if you didn't see, we just put out a Zombie Dice expansion video. Mm -hmm. And I, I do want to mention some stuff, some like, s plug some stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> for our own site, because we don't usually do it. First of all, if you like what you heard, if you enjoy reading news and hearing about news, you can get it f straight from the source on our site. Uh, and Neil, our graphic designer and social media expert, has been posting these articles, like basically in response to a bunch of the news stories that he posts, which are super interesting. So there's a lot of good stuff there, and you can read about a lot more stuff that we don't cover on the show, also. And uh, then also, I want to say, should go back if, and check out. We did an interview with the guy from Icarus Gaming Vacations. If you didn't see that, we do have a promo code. If you want to take a gaming vacation, which is kind of awesome, and find out what that is, check out this video. And if you go to their site, uh, IcarusGamingVacations.com, we'll put a link. Uh, you can use the promo code Roll for Crit, and you get a little discount on it, which is really nice. Uh, and then what else? They can also look forward to a video we're going to be doing sometime over the next uh, few weeks. You'll probably see it with cherry-picked games mm -hmm. for an RPG that we talked about a little while ago that we sell also. So there's a lot of cool stuff. That was a big mouthful yeah. of stuff that I just wanted to make sure people were aware of. If you like Roll for Crit, you can check it all out. Instead of having, you know, uh, interesting content on the podcast, we'll just blather off some... <laughs> I do have a small topic. I'm yeah, I'd to love to hear some topics. Because um, a lot of times when I try to think of stuff, I always think of comparing board games to video games. Just because they're both very... They're in different directions, but in essence, they're both the idea of bringing game to life. Mm -hmm. And when I think of some board games, I realize there's uh, one topic, usually when I see it a video game, I laugh at right away. I usually don't think it's going to be good. Is when usually a religion particularly in this case, the example I'm going to think of is Christianity. I see a video game that looks like the Bible story, and I think it's just going to be quickly hashed, put together, like, very bad. But then I think of some board games that use Christian mythology and that are very good. Huh. So my question is, do you think religion can be, we're going over all of them, not just, like, Christianity, can be made into a good game? Do you think only board games can capture it? Do you think both of them can capture it? Just need to put an effort? Well, I did think of uh, Dante's Inferno when he says that count. <laughs> well, I would say that counts. In fact, Don if you think about the, the book, Dante's Inferno, and is pretty much where we get the idea of hell. He's pretty much where we, right. all our thoughts are. So. Well, no, I th yeah, I think for sure it's, I mean, because well, when you're going down the line, Greek mythology, that's essentially a religion. Then, uh, let me add this next part. Yeah. Can you do it without being offensive? Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, you're always going to offend somebody. If I think if you're the kind of person who would get okay, offended... Majority, let's say majority yeah. offensive, because <laughs> yeah. I understand. No matter what, you can't ever. No, I think it's been done. I think uh, I think that, like you just said, um, Battle for Souls, uh, which which we really like. Like, but I mean, is there like one you can think for uh, Judaism, excluding no, that's, uh, well, that's spinning the dreidel? I guess mainstream <laughs> religion is the right. question. Yeah, yeah, those are the ones I'm more curious. I'm, not I'm really more curious about ones that are still existing. Right. Like, Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, like... 
That's what we're using the word term mythology versus right. religion. I which, think that's just, which I'm gonna uh, you know no, cause, I, I cause, cause some controversy here. Are no, essentially the I same understand, thing. <laughs> but I'm really I'm I'm curious about the ones that have a major presence today. Right. No. Yeah. Now that is interesting. Um, like for example, I know uh, there's a video game. I forget which one it is, and I think um, one of the Hindu gods was in it, and it caused some controversy there. Huh. So I'm wondering, like, can you bring these things here? I'm sure, like, the South Park video game had <laughs> God well, and Jesus. Yeah, except <laughs> South Park is trying to offend, right. so I don't... So, and I, I'm really curious to see, because I do think it'd be a great experience for people to learn more about the mythology. Well, I could definitely see some, like, in certain, um, like, take different aspects of it. Like, rather think smaller picture rather than big picture. Mm -hmm. Like, I think maybe there this might exist, like, a Noah's Ark game or something. Like, I think there's, like, maybe a kid's game like that. Or, like, if, you, if there was some kind of a weird, like... So Adam focusing, and Eve. So and focusing less on maybe the whole of religion, but maybe the tale of Moses, yeah. for example, for Judaism, or Muhammad. Oh, Grant, that would be bad because you can't picture <laughs> So Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the game is all your eyes closed. She must so, have the lights off. I think that would be really cool because I think this, I mean, you need to, have to make sure the right person is doing it too. And that's the, oh, that's the other thing. Do you think someone has to be from that culture or religion to do it. Well, I think you definitely would have to have, it's like, you know, Assassin's Creed, every, every the beginning of every game, they're like, multiple people of different backgrounds worked on this. Please don't get mad at us. Uh, yeah, you got to, like, consult people like that at least. Because, yeah. I mean, like, when I'm thinking in my, in my head, just think of some of the major board game developers you can think of. Most of them are male and oh, white. Yeah. Well, I think it definitely would be weird to see, like, the, the Noah's Ark game from Fantasy Flight or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think if this is going to come from new, anyone... John, the new LCG pack. <laughs> right. Yeah, the Bible <laughs> LCG. It'd have to be, like, an indie developer, I think. But, yeah, so, yeah, I think you could... I mean, yeah, again, if someone was going to be offended by it, they're going to be offended by it. Like, I don't but think there's a way to win that crowd over. No, it's definitely... And I'm curious, would you get... Maybe there is. If so, if... I, if you saw a new Kickstarter, for example, which right. odds are this is where it would come up, <laughs> uh, for a game that is based heavily on Islamic, considering that's sort of like the hot topic in America in terms of religion, mm -hmm. would you be interested in it? No, yeah. Assuming, assuming, I'm assuming it looks good otherwise. Like, right. We're not talking... It could be interesting, even from just a, uh, like a cultural perspective, if, if there's something you know, to do with just like their you know, buildings and technology and history and stuff, as opposed to purely religious. Like, there's plenty of, of different uh, ways you could tackle that, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be yeah. cool. I'd be for it. Uh, I'm curious <laughs> Pretty open mind. Your guys mean, especially if, I wonder if maybe you are part of maybe a religion you feel is not represented well enough in board games. Do you think that would be good? Do you I mean, think we know the be whole, um, uh, well, this isn't really religion, but it's kind of like the whole five tribes debacle with the slave cards, but then that's, and then they replaced Sort that. of, yeah, but... Uh, I definitely am curious to see what your guys' opinions are on this. Do you know of one, maybe, that's just not very well known, that you think does a good job that isn't just a quickly put together showing off the religion that actually does marry the That mechanics? isn't just like a, like a learned, like Bible trivia or something. Like right. That's, that's, that uses that theme. Or like even um, Tales of Arabian Nights kind of delves into some of that a little no, bit. No, that's why I really like that game, because it's yeah. very different from the mythology we're used to. Yeah. But, like, do you know any games that do that well, or bad examples, how would you implement them? Where can they get us these answers and questions and comments? Well, it's really easy. You can just go right down there and just write a comment. And of course, if you do, we'll probably read it. But if you want to know if we read it, you better click subscribe. <laughs> yes, or if you're real eager, you could send us a whole gosh dang email to rollforcrit at gmail.com. He is always watching. And I mentioned before all those things I talked about, the news plus games you can buy mm -hmm. from us, including Dungeons and & Dragons and many more right here at rollforcrit.com. Star Wars Rebellion will be there shortly, I hope. And, um, yeah, right? That's all we'd say. Go to yeah, Twitter. Yeah, so much stuff. Go to our stuff. Twitter. Go to... Just let us know. We, we'd love... If even if it's not about this one, if it's one about a while ago... Yeah. We'd love to hear your opinions. Anything that you got. We, we feed off of it like vampires. It's true. He just eats words. <laughs> he, like, off the screen, just peels into his mouth. <laughs> This is getting weird. <laughs> this is getting weird and I'm dark. I'm Will I'm Jonathan Estes, and this has been Roll for Crit, the podcast. The movie. The show. <laughs>